Hell of a thing, all right? Model a not yai says she encountered racism. Put it up full mass. This was at a photo shoot. Hell of a thing, despite her being an Egyptian born American model, being the first model of South Sudanese descent and mm. the second black supermodel after Naomi Campbell to open mm. a Prada show. All of those superlatives, right? And having appeared on ID and international Vogue covers, including American Vogue three times, she recounted in a since deleted tweet thread that a photographer called her, quote, a cockroach, end quote, while shooting a 2019 Zara campaign with millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable. We just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. It was just this week when the model went to social media to share her experience working mm-hmm. with the popular fast fashion brand. And in the series of tweets, she recounted the discrimination she faced during the photo shoot for the Spanish international retailer. Quote, I remember in 2019 being called a cockroach by a photographer. It was from this brand that I used to always work with. On the last second to last day, the makeup artist starts powdering my face. And the photographer puts his camera down and yells, Lotion la cucaracha, the cockroach. Everyone on set starts smiling and laughing, she says. There's more. Before revealing the brand to be Zara, at the end of the social media thread, she explained how she used to work with this team constantly. On this particular day, she recalled shooting look after look, resulting in over 60 looks for the campaign, despite the language barrier between her and most crew members. Mm. Sharing that everyone else on the set smiled and laughed after the derogatory comment was made, she remembered feeling like, quote, I can't react the way I want to react because at the end of the day, I'm young, I'm alone, I'm black. Anything that I do will affect me, my family, and other black models. Following the alleged incident, she refused to return to the set the next day if she was required to work with the same photographer, despite Zara's team reportedly assuring her that they would fire the photographer, stating they, quote, don't accept that type of behavior. The photographer was still on the set the next day. Okay. So when she arrived, a team member allegedly pulled her aside saying, quote, I asked the team, What happened? And they said, you made it up. Honestly, whenever you come here, you're never smiling and you're never happy to be here. She added, by now there's tears running down my face. I told her I wasn't lying, but she still doesn't believe me. But I could tell she wanted me to sit down and shut up. So I forced them to call my car to the airport and pay my full rate regardless. I remember wanting to come out with this story to magazines, but I was told, think about what it will do to your career. That was my first and not only time being blacklisted. I'm sure they thought I wasn't strong enough to stand. But anyways, hi, B. Hmm. At Zara, remember me? Since being discovered at Howard University's 2017 homecoming, The supermodel has been candid about her experiences in the modeling industry as she since appeared in luxury campaigns, runways, magazine covers around the world. Quote, in the beginning, I felt really isolated. I got thrown into modeling industry, the modeling industry very quickly, and I kind of had to navigate it on my own, she said. Though 
the supermodel said this marked her first time being blacklisted by a brand that is not the first time Zara has been accused of discriminatory practices. In 2015, the Labor Advocacy Group Center for Popular Democracy released a report revealing racial profiling tendencies within the clothing retailer. According to the report, Zara referred to suspected shoplifters as quote special orders. And of the 57% of Zara employees who were familiar with the term, 46% reported black customers were called special orders always or often. The majority of employees believe that black customers are coded as potential thieves at a higher rate than white customers, the report states per Forbes. Employees stated that special orders are identified by dressing a certain way and are mostly African American. Special orders were also defined as anyone who looks black, not put together, or urban, end quote. Uh, put him up full of mass. Amancio Ortega is the founding chair of retail giant Inditex, the parent company of Zara. He is the wealthiest person in Spain mm -hmm. and among the wealthiest in the world, which typically means um, he doesn't give a damn. <laughs> all right, um, hell of a thing. I'm listen. I'm all for it. The Earth is vibrating at a certain rate now. People are coming forth with truth. Um, they're abandoning this idea that somehow you got to keep your mouth closed in order to make it in this world and let people treat you how they choose to. So I'm all for it. I'm glad she actually said something about it, even if it was a little bit later. What say you? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, I think the Spanish have a pretty. Uh, <laughs> I think a well documented casual racism, um, like calling someone cucaracha, like to their fate while they're right there and anyone can understand what that means. Um, so I just want to put that out there. But I she, look, she's not the first African model to have been treated this way, or uh, she, you know, it's just that she's speaking out about it. And and let's be honest, you know, I think high fashion often treats like models of African descent or African models with a certain fetishization anyway, right? And so, how do you think that translates to how when they're literally on the sh on the sh photo shoot, sixty outfits? That's it. I mean, wow. what, what hour of day you're looking at? Ten hours of work. Um, and and so can you imagine how they're being treated if you know in the actual the, the sort of artistic way they're being treated is as this sort of like you know exotic animal right it continues today and so i'm glad she's speaking out about it i hope I think it's wild that no one else spoke English or that she just wasn't made to feel safe. I mean, you're a, like modeling seems like, ah, who cares? It's glamorous. It's like, no, it's not. You got to be like half naked. You got to do all these poses. You have to be comfortable. And then nobody is can speak English. And then they're also like calling you names. It doesn't even matter if it was a racist name, a joke that you don't get that everyone's laughing at. Just the whole thing. I think we have to be a little bit more like just the workplace environment of models uh, is tough and and racist, clearly. Yeah, you know, and when she said that she was alone and black, and she right. knew that it would adversely impact her and her family, um, that that resonates as truth on so many levels to individuals who go through this. 